all of you everyone this is a part of the video and this time the video is all about the cash flow statement so first of all i'll be telling you uh the introduction of the theoretical parts and how the questions are asked in this uh, in, from the examiner of mail of uh 9706 is the accounting code for that so i'll be uh, telling you everything if you're not subscribed to my channel then do subscribe and share the, these videos with those people who are doing the real so let's start with the video first so i'll be giving you the theory concept of a levels accounting so if i talk about the a levels accounting so a levels accounting one of the major concepts of uh cash flow system is that so far we have been doing the accounting from the perspective of accrual basis so far we are doing accounting and calculating profit on the accrual basis so many of the times the examiner would ask you the difference between the profit and the cash in your examination and this is the first learning objective from uh, of this topic so accrual basis means that let's suppose if an expense has incurred in 2019 so it means that we have to record it in 2019 regardless of this whether the cash has been received or not whether the payment has been received or not in short if i repeat again it means that if the expense has been incurred in 2019 you need to record it regardless of the cash payment made or not okay so be clear about this thing but in this cash flow statement, what do we see? We see the cash payment, whether the cash has been paid either through our own pockets or from the, from the bank account. But the major concept which is very important in this is that whether the cash has been paid or not. So this is very important. If you have paid the cash, so an expense which is of 2020 and you're making cash flow statement of 2019, that will still be recorded as a cash outflow. That means that will still be recorded in the cash flow statement. So be mindful of that. So far, when we are doing so much of accounting on the basis of accrual system, we are very. It is very difficult for us uh, to just make a cash flow statement in the examination. There's a major reason that students tend to make mistakes. A level topics are comparatively easy if you follow the uh, technique which leads to success. So let's just start with that cash flow statement. There are certain headings I'll be telling you. There are three headings of a cash flow statement. The first heading is uh, the cash flow from operations. Cash flow from operations. What is that? I'll tell you in a short while. Second heading is cash flow from investing activities. And the last and the third heading is cash flow from financing activities. We'll again do a question two in this class so that you will be, uh, sorry, I'm not don't have to write investing, I have to write financing. Okay, so we will also do a password question in the class so that people should be able to differentiate between things which are from operations, which are from investing, and which are from financing activities. So let's start with the first one. Operating activity means those activities which relate to the operations. Let's suppose my business is that I sell uh, laptops in markets. So I'm selling laptops in the market, so it means Whatever expenses are incurred due to selling laptops in the market will be catered in the category of operation and whatever uh, whatever payments are received by me, whatever earnings are done by me uh, in that case in the market just after selling the laptops will be termed, will be coming under the operations section. So I hope you are clear on this. Operations, whatever things we are doing in our business will be termed under the operations. It can either be an earning from the operations or a payment from the operation it can be both sides don't consider this thing that it will only be an earning or an expense both can be there so summarizing the thing cash flow from operations whether it's a cash inflow that means whether i'm earning from operations or i'm paying something due to operations both things will be coming under the heading of cash flow from operations there are certain items to be listed down i'll tell you in a short Cash flow from investing activity, very important. And what is this cash flow from investing activity? Mainly involves the purchase of NCA, non current asset, and it involves the disposal of a non current asset. Okay, and disposal of a non current asset. NCA is a short form, again, I'm writing it down just to save the space. And the last thing is that it involves the issue of shares, it involves the redemption of debentures or issue of debentures both things can be there yeah. i hope you know this thing debenture is a term which is utilized which is used in the account a levels accounting and low levels accounting students don't know what is debenture debenture means an i o u certificate if i write it down on the screen i o u certificate which is given by a company to an individual 
in order to ascertain this thing that the company has to pay the amount back to the individual. The company has taken the loan from an individual and there are payments made of interest rates. So when the payments are made of interest rate, so it is a debenture. So again, redemption of debenture means giving back the debenture. That is take, uh, giving the loan back to the individual from whom the company has taken earlier. Okay, I hope you are clear on this thing. Uh, if it is a redemption of debentures, sir, could it be an issue of debentures? Yes, it could be the issue of debentures. And the last but not least thing, it could also be an issue of a bank loan or a payment of a bank loan that is a redemption. It could be anything but financing means whatever things finance your business, whatever things increases your investment in the business will be termed under the financing activity. Investing activities, whatever things increase your investment, that means increase your investment in non-current asset. And the operations I can have already told you. I hope you all are clear on this thing. So let's move forward from this. I'll be moving forward and erasing this thing on the screen, and I'll be starting the format of cash flow statement. The most widely, the most common format which is used in our accounting part is this. And how do we do that? We do this like this. First of all, we write it down X, Y, Z cash flow statement for the year. Cash flow statement for the year ended. Cash flow statement for the year ended. Uh, let's suppose I'm saying it is December 31st, 2020. Okay. Um, sorry, uh, you need to change this format. It is 31st December 2020. 31st December 2020. You make two dollar columns and it is not debit or credit. Don't con be confusing that. First heading from this is cash flow from operations okay cash flow from operations and what you write over here you write profit before interest profit before interest and, ex and taxation profit before interest and taxation why we take this amount as the reason is that because after interest and taxation we don't have any control on that so that's why we write it as profit before interest and taxation that will come in the last column add slash less adjustments so what do we do? We write as add slash less adjustments. Adjustments could be uh, the depreciation part. We need to add the depreciation back. So why we are adding the depreciation back? Just because depreciation is a non-cash expense. I already told you we'll be catering only those expenses which are related to cash. So that is a non-cash expense. So we'll be adding that. I'm writing it in the first column. Less gain on disposal. If it is a gain on disposal, it would have been earlier and added to the income stream. So I need to take out the effect just because gain on disposal is not in terms of cash. It is just a calculation where we see that the net book value was calculated by us after depreciation. Then we compare it in the market and we see that it's again gain, but gain is not in terms of cash. Okay. Apart from this, there could be any other thing which could be or I'm writing an or it could be a loss on disposal. So I will say. If it is a loss on disposal, I will just add it again because earlier it was deducted. So it could be either things, any of these, there would not be both of the things in the question. Only one scenario, maybe there would be a gain on disposal on equipment and a loss on disposal on office machinery. So there are two things, but this type of question are not asked in the A levels examination because it makes complicated for the student to perform in the examination. So I'll just remove the last one. Because I have written it down just for your understanding part and I have limited space so I will just remove this. Okay. Uh, just coming back to the question and then we have certain things which will be uh, again uh, related to the operations. Then there are certain things we will say this thing. Add slash less that is decrease or increase in inventory. So I will explain this concept first. Then I'll write it down. Uh, whenever there is an inventory, when it is an increase in inventory, so it will be deducted. Why it will be deducted? Because you are investing in an activity, your cash outflow will be more, and your cash outflow will, will be more. So what will happen? Your cash will be trapped in that, and your, when you, when your cash is trapped in that, so you will have less cash with you just to invest in your other items. So that's why it is a loss according to the cash. If I compare it with the cash position. So cash is going out more because we are purchasing more from the market. Okay, so that is a deduction in that case. Then again, we have add slash 
less what add slash less another item which is related to the balance sheet which is termed as trade receivable what do you think if the trade receivables are increasing so it will be it should be deducted so decrease or increase if it is a decrease in trade receivable it's something good why it is something good because our trade receivables are paying us earlier so i'll be adding that okay and then there is the last thing which is termed as trade tables add slash less increase or decrease in trade tables if the trade tables are increasing it is a good thing for the business because the business is paying the trade tables late so that's why it would be good so i'm just put uh, not putting in anything if it is a decrease in trade tables it is a it should be in brackets it should be deducted if it is an increase in trade tables it should be in positive it should be added i hope you are getting this logic over here that if it is increasing the trade tables are increasing so it will be uh, added if it is a decrease in trade table it should be deducted from the amount again the same thing with the trade receivables what happens with the trade receivable if they are decreasing so it is a good thing if they are increasing it is a bad thing just because trade tables are paying us late so the opposite situation applies in trade tables and the opposite of trade tables uh, uh, treatment will be applied in the trade receivables i hope you are clear so far then the last thing which is there in this trade it is the payment of taxation taxes paid how do we do that we just make a t account and we calculate so it is tax paid by the business so again it is whatever tax which is paid in terms of cash will be that and less interest paid okay whatever interest is paid so we'll deduct that and we'll get the answer which is termed as cash flow from investing activity okay cash flow from investing sorry cash flow from operations operating activity sorry i'm sorry for that cash flow from operating activities okay this is the final answer from operating activities but there is one thing as what is that cash flow from investment so this will be the continuation of the format i'll be doing that in the question so just bear with me uh, i'll just continue the format because i don't have space so i'll be moving all of these items from this but the answer of cash flow from operations will be added to the answer of cash flow from investing activities so just remember this thing that cash flow from investing activities will be added in the in the answer of cash flow from operating activities so i'll just start with the options of this let's suppose i am writing it down cash flow from operations so whatever total i got and i erase it so i'll write it over here then i will write cash flow next heading from investing activities okay cash flow from investing activities so whatever we have let's suppose i am writing it down purchase of a non current asset let's suppose the question is saying we have purchased an equipment so i'll be writing an equipment maybe there are more items so i'll write it in the first column then i'll say that add it will be a less because it will involve the outflow of cash add disposal of of non current asset so again if you dispose of a non current asset if you sold a non current asset it would be good for the business if we see from the perspective of cash position so it will be added and this will be less so again whatever the net of will be it will come in the last column so majority of time there are two to three items maximum not, not more than that from investing activities then we have cash flow from financing activities so i will write it down cash flow from financing activities uh sorry i write investing financing activities so i write it down over here from financing activities and it will be issue of shares redemption of debentures and there could be uh, the the decrease in loan maybe the bank loan has to be paid but the bank loan scenario comes very less issue of shares will be the addition you will add it just because you will receive the cash when you will issue the shares less redemption you will deduct it so you will get a net of over here you will add the cash flow from operations cash flow from investing activities and cash flow from financing activity you will get the answer which is termed as net cash flow okay 
net cash flow add opening cash and cash equivalents how do you get the opening cash and cash equivalents the cash and cash equivalents will be given in the question okay the cash and cash equivalents it will be given in the question in the balance sheet then you will add it you will get the cash and cash equivalents closing which should be same as with whatever is given in the question in the balance sheet it should match with the balance sheet the last answer if it doesn't match it means that you are making an error you are making a mistake in that so just be sure check all of your cash flow statement points the areas where you could make the mistake is the depreciation area calculation of depreciation uh, you could make an error in the disposal calculation value you could make an error in the taxation which is to be paid and the interest rate or maybe you would have taken the wrong profit figure so these are the common areas where i observe that the students are making mistakes so just uh, observe this thing and don't make mistakes like this. So uh, this was it for the format and now we'll move on to the question. So I'll just start with the question uh, with one of the questions of cash flow so that your understanding could be better in that question. Okay, so let's move forward to our question. Okay, so I've opened the question in front of you and the question is from uh, the passport which is A levels and made in 2012 of variant 43 9706 paper 4 supplementary paper that is A levels. So that is the question which is saying uh, Simlo Smagans PLC has been manufacturing cutlery for many years. It provided the following financial information. There is a balance sheet which is given in front of you. There are two years for you to just manage things so that you could compare between two years. Uh, non cut assets, inventories, and all things are given. I uh, will move on to the income statement revenue, cost of sales, gross profit, profit from operations, finance cost, profit from taxation, taxation, profit attributable to equity holders, and everything is there. Now, the additional information which is very important. The debentures were redeemed at par, okay. And this par means that whatever is the face value, and the face value majority of time remains one, and it is not written anything, it is done over, okay. Uh, plant machinery costing 27,500 was sold during the year for 10,000, it has been depreciated by 19,600. You see how we'll utilize this thing. Additional machinery was purchased at a cost of 35,000, there is no depreciation charge in the year of acquisition. There is no acquisition or disposal of office equipment during the year. Okay. The question is in prepare a statement, of statement to show the net cash flow from operating activities and the marks available are 18 marks. That's so huge. Prepare a statement of cash flow, cash flows for the year ended 30th April in accordance with IES. So that is again the normal requirement of 13 marks. So 16, 3, 19, 29 marks are available for this thing. Which is very important. If you know the format, if you know how to go about the question, you will get the 29 marks easily with you. So let's just start with this thing. First of all, we need this thing, which is this profit before, sorry, not profit before taxation. It will be this thing. We'll start from this profit from operations. Okay. So the profit from operation is very important. We need to select the right profit because the students tend to make mistake that is three four five four eight is the profit from the to the start so let's shift toward our uh, towards our let's see what is the name of the question the name of the question is i guess it is saying similbo or uh, smagans let's write it down similbo smagans plc Sorry, I'm not sure why um, whiteboard detectors I will see PLC. Okay. Statement of cash flows. Statement of cash flows for the year ended. Let's see where the year has ended. 30th April. And the end is 30th April 2012. Okay. So 30th April 2012. Again, two uh, columns which are there cash flow from operations. Okay. So, how we'll do that cash flow from operations? We'll start with that profit before interest and tax. Okay. Profit before interest and tax. I've already shown you what is the profit for that. You can see this is the profit. Profit from operations 3458 will, will 
use this prophet sorry 3458 3458 digest uh, yes this is the prophet and now the first thing which we have to do in this question is add or less adjustments add or less adjustments see whether we have to add it or not add the position what is the depreciation for the question so let's start with the depreciation part so i'll just uh, make sure that we are doing this question i'll uh, i'll make another whiteboard just for the working purpose this is a non current asset question and in the non current assets we have two categories so i'll just name two name the non current asset which, which will be plant and machine so let's make the key account of plant and machine plant and machinery. So let's make the key account of plant and machinery. Okay, the dollar sign should be there and the year is, I'm not sure which year it is, uh, 2012. So you should be writing it down so that the format of the T account should be there. So again, the balance will be and which type of account it is, it is a NBV account, net book value account, it's not a cost account. So again, 2012, so if we start with the first day, it is ending in April. So the first date would be March 1st. Okay. And we'll be writing on 2011 because the year is starting as 2011 in the question. So we write the start date of the year. Okay. So let's, let's remove this. So just moving forward, 2011, the balance BD of the question, which will be the net book value, which is given in the Balance. We know this we write net book value in the balance 64,900, which is there. So 64,900. Then I will say that it is April 30th. The balance CD, which is again given in the question, so I will write it down over here 82,500. 82,500. So I can distribute that. Then it will be a disposal thing when the asset was sold, and there, there, there will be a depreciation part. And on the debit side again, there will be an addition part that whatever we have purchased in the year. So let's see whatever we have purchased. Additional machinery was purchased at thirty-five thousand. So let's write it down in the T account. And what was the date for that? I need to see that. I guess the date is very important. So let's write it down on the last day because the date is not mentioned in that April thirtieth. I'm writing it down additions. And the additions are worth 35,000. Okay, so how do you calculate the disposal part? See, the machinery was uh, 27,500 worth it, and it was sold, it was depreciated by uh, 19,600. So, how it will be done? 27,500 minus 19,600 just to get to know the net book value of the machine which was sold. So, I need to do that on the calculator 27,500 minus. 19,600 will give me 7,900 was the netbook value. Why we are taking the netbook value of the machine? Just because this is a netbook value account, that's why we have to go for that. 7,900 is the uh, netbook value. Again, we'll assume that it was also sold on April 30th because the dates are not mentioned. So you can assume it on that date. Okay. Now the missing figure becomes the balancing figure becomes the depreciation part. Let's use on computer with in front of you. Let's get the total of the debit side 64,900 plus 35,000. It is 99,900. Okay. On the credit side, again, it is 99,900. So it will be like this 99,900 minus 7,900 on the credit side minus 82,500. So the depreciation part is 9,500. Depreciation of what? Of plant and machinery is 9500. Okay, of plant and machine is 9500 dollars. But there is any other asset too in the question. So let's see what is the depreciation for that asset. 9500. So let's see what is the depreciation for that asset. The question was saying in this that there was no acquisition or disposal of office equipment in the year. So it means whatever the difference is coming over here, you can see this thing. 
whatever the difference is coming between this and this will be the depreciation part. So you could see that earlier it was 38,355 and now it is 34,519. Uh, so the difference would be just because of the depreciation part. This is what the examiner wants to tell you in the question. 38355 minus 34519. So the depreciation 38364. What for office equipment? So I hope you are getting it. What is the repetition? The repetition 3836. 3836 dollars for office equipment. How did I get it? I have just made the difference of balance BD and balance CD of office equipment. That's total both of these so that we could just be sure about the depreciation part and how much is the depreciation. So let's do that. Let's add these together. Why we are adding this in order to find out the total depth that is 13,336. So let's move forward again to our home page of this whiteboard. Earlier we have made this format like this. So I'll just open up 13,336. Less disposal on, on machine because I have sold plant and machine so I will be writing it down plant and machine and machine earlier I have calculated that the disposal amount was 9500 if I am not wrong let's see it again and I will tell you how see this slide is there you can see this thing you can see this thing and this slide is over here 95 sorry 7900 is the net book value of the asset which was sold so you have the net book value of the asset which is 7900 and the asset was sold for 10,000 sir how did you get the 10,000 the 10,000 figure is over here you could see this thing see the second one it was sold for dollar 10 it means that it was sold for 10,000 and the worth was 7,900. So we'll just take out the gain on this portion. What is that? 10,000 minus 7,900. It will be around 2,100. Okay. So 2,100 is the gain on this portion in the portion. And it's better if you just mention it. The blue one, working one, working two. It will help you get more. Uh, marks in the examination. So just do that. Okay, so now we'll move forward to the main slide. We'll write 2100 less less why it is being deducted just because it was added earlier. So let's deduct it and let me make it to the last column. 6 minus 2100 will be 11,236. Okay. So let's move downwards so that we could just be, we are able to see this. Then there will be an adjustment. What will be that? Uh, less increase. Add slash less increase slash decrease in working capital. Okay. We'll give a heading of working capital. Then we'll see that whether our inventory is increasing or decreasing. All the items which I told you earlier. So let's see. Uh, earlier in your inventory was 16,521 and now your inventory is 18,758. So it is increasing. So an increase in inventory means that you are purchasing more of your inventory. And when you are purchasing more of your inventory, it means that you are just giving more of the cash for the purchase of inventory, which is bad for the business, which is bad for the business inventory position. Sorry, cash position. Because you are making more purchases. So the difference of this is 2237. 2237 is the difference of inventory. So I just write it down 2237 and it will be less increase in inventory. Again, I'll explain this concept why I'm deducting it just because we know this thing that when we are purchasing more inventory, we are just giving more cash outwards. We are making a payment towards the inventory, which is a bad thing for a business. So we just need to be vigilant about that. Then we have trade receivables, which is 12517 and 17623. So again, it is increasing. When the trade receivers are increasing, I already told you when they are increasing, so the customers are paying us less. So 
it is bad for the business. So when it is bad for the business, so it should be deducted. So 17623, which is given in the balance sheet, minus 12517. Maybe some of the students might be thinking, sir, why you're deducting the second column with the first column? Because you can see 2011 is given first and 2012 is given. And so we minus the closing balance with the opening balance, it will give you 5106, which is an increase in trade receivable. When the trade receivables are increasing, it means they are paying us late. So it is a bad thing. Less increase in trade receivables. I hope so far the question is clear to you. So last thing which is there is that which will be the uh, which will be trade payables. Trade payables are again increasing. When the trade payables are increasing in a question, it means we are paying the trade payables late. When we are paying them late, it is good for the cash position of the business because cash is being saved by us for the time being. And what is the difference between the opening and closing balance of trade payables? 4104. So it is 4104 add, add increase in what? Increase in trade payables. So let's plus minus this thing and see what we get minus double two three seven minus five one zero six plus four one zero four so the net is three two three nine let's see that three two three nine which is again minus three two three nine and then we have again we need to go downwards it is less taxation paid less tax paid and the next item is less interest paid for the tax paid we have to make another adjustment for the interest paid we know this thing very well from the question let's see how do we know from the question the interest is 1600 and we can see from the current libraries there is no accruals of interest what does it mean it means it is an assumption that we have paid the whole tax that's why there is no payables remaining at the end of the year when there are no payables it means 1600 is already paid by full amount by the business. So 1600 interest paid will be over here in the last column. And the tax paid, we need to do little adjustment for that. Let's see. New whiteboard and then I'll make a T account of taxation. Why? Because there is an adjustment of tax. So I'll write taxation payable. And again, it is a payable. So from the approval and prepayment account, you would have learned this thing. So when it is a payable, it will be on the credit side. Again, it all depends on approval and prepayment, whether it's accrued, it's a, uh, uh, what we can say, it's a prepaid expense. So you know this from the concept of, from the concept of approval and prepayment account. Okay? So again, the year starts from March 1st. So how do we get the balance BD? We have taxation account, you can see 4200 is the balance CD, 5350 is the balance CD. Okay. So 4200 is the balance CD, and then we have April 30th. This is April 30th, balance CD 5350. Income statement April 30th, which is given in the question, which will be over here. Income statement. Which is again given. I'm writing it down. You don't don't need to write this thing over. So I'll just erase it down. Okay. So income statement. Let's see the question. Uh, we have this retained earnings four five zero four six, and we have seventeen eight nine eight. But we don't need to see this because taxation is over here. The P eight hundred. Okay. So it is given in the income statement. So the P eight hundred taken from the income statement. What we need to find out. We need find out April 30th how much was paid from the bank or the cash amount how much was paid in terms of cash so let's see what do we get debit side 5800 plus 4200 minus 5350 you will get 4650 was paid by cash let's close the T account plus 5350 will be 10,000 we just need to write the balance with the again just because it carries one mark in majority of cases. Okay. And then date should again be there. March 1st, Okay. So let's move forward to the main slide. What we have to quote, we have to quote 4650 in the main slide. 
what was the amount for uh, 650 okay. 4650 is the amount you remember that and we need to deduct it from the amount minus 4650 let's see what do we have in the end cash flow from operation which carries 16 marks or 34548 which is at the top plus 11236 minus 3239 minus 4650 minus 16 and get so we get 36 295 which is cash flow from operations excuse me for my writing just because uh, time allow us to improve so cash flow from operations is there let's move on to the next slide which is cash flow from investing activities from investing activities again we need to see how many non cred assets we purchase so let's see purchase of data because it is mentioned in the question so i remember this thing that's why i'm writing it down great so purchase of land and equipment so i'm writing down in the first column 35,000 so how did you get 35,000 let's come to the slide uh, you can see the point is mentioned over here in this addition machine was purchased at a cost of 35,000 so 35,000 i remember it from here one plant and equipment was sold over here so that's why i remember this two so i'll write it down this will be less why because we have paid for the purchase add disposal of land and equipment the plant and equipment was sold for 10,000 as I as we saw the question in the start it was sold for 10,000 so it will be a positive because it will be the cash was given to us let's see this 27,500 was sold during the year for $10,000 you can see this so it is a positive cash inflow for the business so that's why we are adding it Minus 35,000 plus 10,000, it will give you minus 25,000. Okay. So, this will be the cash flow from investing activities. Now, the last thing which is remaining is cash flow from financing activities. So, it will be cash flow from financing activities. So, let's see this financing activities. One thing which is shown is that issue of shares will be there, and the second thing is which will be added. Because it will give a cash inflow. Less will be the redemption of the benches. Why? Because the question is told me. I'll show you how. Redemption of the benches. Let's come over here. The question is saying the debentures were redeemed at par. So it's already told me that freedom debentures are redeemed. How do you calculate the ordinary share issue of shares? You add both of these 48,000 minus 78,000. 78,000 minus 48,000 I guess it will give you around it will give you around 30,000 okay so if you add 30,000 in uh, 78 in 48,000 you will get 78,000 around so 30,000 will be the increase or issue in the share capital so 30,000 okay. how did I get that I added the share premium share capital and I added the opening balance of both I deducted from the closing balance of both I got a positive 30,000 because it was an issue you can see that the values are increasing from 2011 to 2012 so it is a good thing debentures are redeemed which means that they are repaid because earlier in 2011 it was 50,000 and now they are 30,000 you can see they are redeemed by 20,000 so when they are redeemed so you have to pay some cash for us so that's why it is negative 30,000 minus 20,000 10,000 positive. So let's see what do we have from net cash flow from the whole thing. Net cash flow. So let's use a calculator over here 36295 minus 25,000 plus 10,000. So it will be 21295. Add opening balance of cash flow. Opening cash and cash equivalents, which will be given in the question. Equivalents, and that is how much is that? You can see this is 6459. Let's see that. 
six four five nine. So let's add that six four five nine. Just two seven seven five four. It is closing cash and cash equivalents. Let's compare this value with the balance sheet. You can see 27754. This means that our cash flow statement is accurate, it's correct, it should be balanced. Okay, remember this thing. I hope you like the video and do uh, subscribe the channel for the support. I'll be making a video inshallah on those things which are very important, maybe on investment appraisal in the future time period, activity based costing. These things are very important and very difficult for the perspective of A levels. Process costing is also an important topic. If you want to interact with me, go to Facebook. Write Fahad Ali and you will get my Facebook page. Like the Facebook page and you can interact with me on WhatsApp over there. If there is any query, any problem, you can tell me, share this video with those people who are doing A accounting. Thank you for watching the video and bye.